Oh, there it is. Righty, guys. 2024. Fairly new uh, <clears throat> Jeep Grand Cherokee. All right, now here's the deal. Uh, transmission slipping. And the good news is I can visually see why. <laughs> yeah, uh, look, guys, that's a leak. Okay, so I can imagine it's low on fluid. Now here's the deal. All right, this only place the leaks is visual at. There's no leak up here at the cooler. There's no leak nowhere else. So when this happens, the only thing you can suspect is a pan. All right, now, which begs the question, guys. Y'all know this is plastic, right? Uh, why? I don't know. This is a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay. So, and from a service standpoint, remember what I told y'all, it's, it's quite easy to simply measure what you take out and go back in exactly what you took out and then do your necessary check. That won't be the case here because we're starting with a already low uh, fluid base. It's already low on fluid. <clears throat> so now I will have to go through the normal procedure of the normal refill procedure. Okay. It's all based around centered around temperature <clears throat> okay so once you get the new pan on and go in with at least <clears throat> four or five quarts that's when you go through all the gears or go through the second gear i gotta read it again i don't know about hard but you gotta get it get it to that temperature for uh, number one go through all the gears or go through second gear at a certain speed again i don't know about hard i gotta read it but the field procedure really matters from a standpoint from this standpoint simply because you're already low now Y'all see what I got here? This guy gonna get us training. He got 86,000 miles on him. Good news is he do for a service anyway. Look, I got a Mopar pan right here, guys. Yes, sir, Reebok. Lucky, lucky, lucky. <laughs> Still plastic. <laughs> now, I did on a previous video, I showed y'all where you can get a steel pan and put on here and it, it will fit. Everything will be the same. It's just gonna be cost a little bit more. All right, the good news about this pan is the filter is integrated into it. Okay, so again, you you technically doing a transmission service. This is what I call a transmission service when you are replacing the fluid as well as the filter. It makes absolutely no sense to do a uh, drain and refill. Okay, because all the trash is in the filter. Your number one priority goal should be to go after that filter if it's feasible, <laughs> if it's possible. The ZF front wheel drive 948 TE found on a lot of the front wheel drive vehicles. You can't get to that filter unless you take the transmission out. So technically, you can't do a transmission service on that. So you are only left with the option of a drain and refill. <clears throat> Hopefully during that drain and refill, some of the trash will come out. <laughs> but the filter's job is to capture that trash. It's not just going to let that trash go out just because you got a drain plug open. Yeah, so that... <laughs> It's unfortunate the way they're doing transmission nowadays, but you know, I gotta play with the rules, play by the rules I'm dealt with. All right, so let me get this pan off. No need filming this. There's nothing technical about this. I don't know why they call it a feel for life. Uh, speaking of feel for life and fluid, only <clears throat> eight, nine speed. This stuff is expensive, but this is what your transmission calls for. Now, I said that to say this. Have I ever used uh, aftermarket fluid? Absolutely. Valvoline multi-purpose fluid. We had a special going for services or draining refills. We were using the Valvoline. It's red. Yeah, we was putting that in the uh, transmission. This That's one of those things where you got to follow the rules. I don't agree with it, but I had to follow the rules. So I was doing services or draining refills with Valvoline multi-purpose fluid on ZF transmissions. Now, did it destroy any of the transmission? Absolutely not. The, and the good news about it, even if it did, ZF will pay for it. ZF will warranty their fluid and their parts, okay? If so, if you exhibit a failure because of using their product, they will pay for that product. That's how confident it is in the fluid. Guys, mind you, transmission fluid is pretty much... One of the major differences in different kinds of transmission fluid is the color. This color is light greenish, all right? The older traditional way of coloring uh, as it relates to transmission fluid was red. That's no longer the case now. Transmission fluid can be any color. And a lot of that had to do with being able to identify leaking. It's nothing like having a fluid leaking from a vehicle and you can't tell what fluid it's coming from because the power steering, the oil, everything was the same color. So they had to fi figure out a way to deal with that. And this is the way they did. So I got a transmission service to do. I ain't got to move no brackets or nothing. Look at that. Woo. Yeah, this is going to be lovely. Let me get my drain bucket over here and do this 8-9 speed ZF automatic transmission service because of leaking. 
the good news is they was due for a service anyway. Alrighty, guys. As you can see, I got the pan off, guys. Now, this is why it's important to service these things and forget all of that feel for life mumble jumble, okay? Here's the old pan right here. Now, uh, remember, this fluid is supposed to start off as clear greenish. Now, see how dark it is? 80,000 miles, okay? Uh, ZF recommend servicing this thing at 60,000 miles, between 50 and 60. Here's the filter that's integrated into the pan, remember, all right? So if you look real good in there, you can see debris, trash, that generates from a regular operating transmission, all right? It gets trapped in the filter the way it's supposed to. What sense does it make to not replace this filter or this pan in general? It makes zero sense, okay? As you can see right here, the magnet, this is what it makes. Most transmission pans have a magnet in it. You can see debris starting to form right here this is not bad at all for 80,000 mile transmission okay I've seen some of the TE transmission the magnet will be saturated with uh, debris me uh, metal particles and things like that that's what the magnet is for so let's think this think this over for a second if you are told never to service this what make you think or what how do you expect this to look after let's say a hundred thousand miles okay <laughs> yeah this side looks at 80,000 miles Remember guys, the sole purpose of servicing your transmission is to help, hear me out, help extend its life. Okay, you want your transmission to last as long as possible because let's face it, inevitably, every transmission out there in every car is gonna eventually fail. All right, so your part, your goal should be to make it last as long as possible. It's not gonna last forever, that's never. But you can do your part by servicing it to help it last as long as pop possible to help extend its life. All right. So, yeah, that's all I got, man. Let me get out of here. It's just real simple from here. I'm going to put the new pan on. And, uh, ta -da. yeah, look at that clean that filth is. Y'all see that? That's how filth is supposed to look, baby. Well, you know, over time, it's all going to uh, uh, get dirty. But we're going to do our part. Uh, and... <laughs> And mind you, I'm not servicing this transmission because they want a service. This pan was leaking. Guys, I see, or oh, there's no way for this pan to just regularly leak. Okay, there has to be a stress crack somewhere in this pan. Remember, it's plastic and it's underneath the car. There's no shield. There's no, uh, you know, metal shield guarding this. So uh, something as small as a little rock in the road could puncture a hole in this. How on earth, what explains this transmission pan leaking? That's the only reason why I'm servicing this transmission. No, they're not here to help extend the life of their transmission. They're here because uh, their shifting is starting to be affected. And it's simply because it's low on fluid. This pan was leaking. I'm not finna hunt down a leak. I'm not gonna look for a stress crack. You can't see that with the naked eye. I don't care. <laughs> My goal is to stop the leak and, and get this transmission to shift the way it's supposed to. That's what I'm doing by inadvertently servicing it <laughs> yeah imagine that okay i don't know uh maybe these shouldn't have never been plastic what y'all think i know some of y'all hate just hate plastic with a passion all right but we got to deal with the hand wheel dip i say that all the time i don't like some of the stuff that go on but uh ain't nothing i can do about it looky looky how cute it is got the new uh transmission pan on but we ran into a problem guys uh engineers seem to suck all right this is my field hole Look how close it is to this drive shaft. I, I can't get my regular socket in there. Or my uh, my regular Allen, you see? I can't get that in there. So we're going to have to be creative, guys. We're going to have to get creative. Don't panic. Whatever you do, don't panic. Now, you're going to need a uh, small Allen head. Real small. You probably have to put a wrench on here. Let me see what I got. All right, guys. I can't find my Allen set, but here's my small torque bits. So, like I say, don't panic. Just find out which side will go in here. Grab that side, we're gonna grab a 10 millimeter wrench. I'm thinking the end heads of these. We gotta get creative, guys, let's get it. All right, guys, I got my box 10 millimeter, my box in ratcheted type, so, like I said, we gotta get creative. I gotta put this on at the same time. Look, man, how engineers suck. I can't even, all right, hold tight. Hey, look at the creativity, guys, all right? I couldn't, I couldn't use the open end wrench because it was just flexing, all right? So I got my long, all right, here goes nothing. See this damn thing tight. Oh, please don't strip. Uh, whew. Got it, guys. 
Yes. See, now I can't. Man, engineers, boy, I tell you. Golly. All right, guys. It's coming off, see. I'm running out of room. But uh, anyway, now I can go through with the feel procedure. Remember, guys, it's based off temperature. Y'all watch my other video on how to properly feel a 8 HP transmission. Yes, got it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I got to go.